If you want to learn how to take skate photos just like these ones, then hang around for this video. My name is Max. In today's video, I'm going to walk you guys through all the good things. So I'm going to walk you through the equipment, the camera settings, and walk you through my exact setup in order to make these photos happen. First things first, I'm going to show you what equipment that I use, but I'm also going to show you some of the cheapest equipment that you can use for those of you that are just starting off. So camera body wise, I use a Canon R. For lenses, I'll use a Canon 24 to 105 L series, or I'll use the Canon 8 millimeter fisheye, or sometimes I'll even use the Canon 50 millimeter. Now that's just the brand and equipment that I use, but by a simple Google search of cheapest Nikon DSLR or cheapest Sony DSLR or cheapest Sony lenses, you can easily find out which lenses will be suitable for you for those brands. The only thing that I recommend here is that you have a long lens and a fisheye that fit the mount of the camera that you purchase. Now the next thing but most important thing here is you want to invest in some flashes. You'll also want to get some stands and some wireless triggers and receivers for these. You might be wondering how many of these to buy. I personally recommend three. I know a lot of other photographers will use four and five. Some will just use two. Some will just use one. It all depends on what you're going for, but I personally use three. Now I went on Amazon and I looked for the cheapest possible flashes. And what I came across was the newer TT560 flash speed light for Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, etc. It also happened to be that this is the best seller on Amazon. As soon as I put these in my cart, Amazon said people who are buying these flashes are also buying these newer 16 channel wireless remote FM flash speed light radio triggers. And for two of them, it's 30 bucks. But since I wanted a third, I just bought a second pack. So it's a total of 60 bucks. I've had these wireless triggers for over six years and they've worked perfectly fine ever since owning them. The next thing I did was go on Amazon and look for the cheapest flash stands possible. And I found these Amazon Choice, Amazon Basics stands for 28 bucks. But since there's only two of them, I just bought them twice. So I have four of these stands. Now that you know what equipment I use, let's quickly talk about the camera settings. The first thing I'll always do when I get to the skate park is I'll look at the sky and see what kind of conditions we're dealing with. Ideally, if you have a cloudy situation, that will be the best. But if it's blue skies, that's fine. You just kind of have a little bit more work to do with the settings. I typically prefer to keep my shutter at 250 and my f-stop at 5.6 because that will allow the flash's light to fill in the subject just perfectly how I want it, as you've seen in these photos. Sometimes you can adjust those up or down one notch, depending on how the light is, but usually those settings will do it just perfectly for me. As far as the ISO, I like to keep it between the 200 to 400 range. I know at times you might have to go a little bit below that or just a little bit above it, but that's usually the range that I like to keep it in. For my white balance, I'll put my color temperature at 4500, but that really just depends on how the lighting looks that day. These numbers I'm giving you are pretty specific to these flashes, although they do work with a lot of other flashes. I'm just telling you what I've seen with the best results with these flashes. So once I have all those settings figured out, I'll go ahead and I'll attach my wireless trigger to the top of my DSLR on the cold shoe. I'll then attach all my flashes to the wireless triggers that I have, and then screw those on top of the light stands so that they're all ready to go and set up for the shoot. Now this is the trickiest part of it all, so make sure you're paying extra close attention to this. The actual setup of the flashes is super tricky, but typically what I wanna make sure that I do is keep these flashes out of your shot because that's the last thing you wanna see is to see your flash hanging out in the shot. You wanna make sure you get the most professional results possible. So what I'll do is make sure those flashes are far enough out of the shot that I actually want to capture. So when I position them, I make sure that I have one at kind of a lower angle pointing up at the subject and then the other one that's diagonal from it is also pointing the subject kind of lighting the front side of your subject but pointing down aiming directly at the other flash so that if those flashes were to go in a straight line they'd basically collide. The third flash I'll position based on where the other two are at and where I see the need for it. So if I think the front of the subject needs light, I'll point it up and directly down the subject from the very front. And this photo is a little bit more tricky because it's a hip so I couldn't necessarily have my flashes where I wanted them to be, but I had to still get them out of the photo. So you'll notice where I set up the flashes is a little bit different, but it still was allowed to light up the subject exactly how I wanted. Sometimes you may need to adjust the height of these flashes or the angle of them, depending on how high your subject is popping their trick, or depending on kind of where the light is actually spraying in the photo. Sometimes what I'll do is have the skater stand in the spot where they'll be doing the trick, that way I can see how the lighting is on them. Or what I'll do is ask the skater to do the trick a couple times 
That way I can see how the light is kind of absorbing them. Once the setup is all good, then I'll make sure that I'm picking the right spot so that the object that they're skating looks the best and it's the best possible angle. Getting the right moment is super hard because there's only one time that your flashes will fire. This is where you should let the skater know that you both have to be patient with it and then you guys can just keep taking the photo until you catch the right moment. I typically like to do it when the skater has the trick pop the highest and their foot positioning looks the best. As long as both of you are patient, you can click as many as you want until you get just that right moment. And once you get that right moment, you can get some scafos that look just like these that I showed you at the beginning of the video. This is something that has taken me several years to practice, but seriously, the more that you do it, the better you'll get with it. And just like anything else, it all comes in time. So just be patient with it and you can do the same thing too. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you did, feel free to hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment, and let me know if you have any other questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And that's it for this video. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.